Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're working on this 2003, I think, 02 or 03 Honda Shadow Spirit. It's a 750 twin. Today what we'll be doing is a couple of things actually. We've got to pull the carbs off. I'll have to tear those down and soak them and clean them. It's running lean, runs with a, it runs fine when I pull the choke on a little bit, but when you shut the choke off, it stumbles and carries on and doesn't behave. So it's running lean. Uh, it's probably just junk in the carb. It did run fine, but it's been a been a little while, so uh, a couple of years actually. So the carbs are probably got junk floating around in them. So we'll fix that up, and uh, also we got to set the valves. It's got sixty thousand kilometers on it. It should have been checked a few times by now. I'm not sure if they were ever done, but uh, we're going to do it. So, and then I know they were done at sixty thousand. <laughs> I'm not going to go through everything. The seat has to come off. The tank has to come off. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And once we get down into where the carbs are on the top end, then, then I'll put the camera back on. We're probably going to have to take the, the covers off. So this is a liquid cooled twin. It looks like an air cooled, but it's actually liquid cooled. These are just, they're fakies. <laughs> they're just covers. They just bolt on. These actually come off and the cylinder is, in behind it the jug is in behind it so i'll get it all stripped down and then we're going to jump into the carbs and the valve set Okay, so we got our tore down, carbs are off. I have a suspicion I might find a bad diaphragm in this carb. Because if you, I'll move the slide up and down. It's a vacuum operated slide. So you can hear the delay. If you listen to this one, you hear no air and it slams down. So I think we might have a bad diaphragm underneath this cover here. Maybe. We'll check it out. The rest of the bikes tore down many, many minutes later. <laughs> so now we're at the point where we... I've already taken the bolts out, but I haven't popped the covers yet. So once you get to this far, it's easy. You got like one bolt in each side. <laughs> That's it. Let me get a rubber mallet. We'll just give that a little knock get them to pop up. I left all the coolant pipes on there. Hopefully you'll be able to snake it out. Oh, that was easy. There we go. I don't want to drain the coolant if I don't have to. Can I sneak it out without wrecking anything? Maybe. Let's try this one. I might have to take this top breather off to clear. This has got a water outlet in the way. Can I clear it? Maybe. Maybe. I don't remember how I did it on the last one. I will tell you, these, the bands on the, the clamps on the boots for the carburetor, they were loose. <laughs> Not tight. That's a potential vacuum leak. That's potential lean running. All right, well, let me mess with this. I may have to roll the engine over to get it to a point where I can get those out of there. Possibly. But I'll mess with it and get to that point. <laughs> Will ya? Nope, no clearance. All right. I'll go farther and uh, we'll get those covers off and then I'll turn the camera back on. Okay, so I've got it most of the way apart. That front cover, I can't get all the way out without taking all kinds of other stuff off of there. So I'm able to tilt it one way to get to the intake valves. I could tilt it this way to get to the exhaust valve at the front. And the front cylinder has to be checked and adjusted first, which is already done. They were right in spec, perfectly in spec. So they were likely done 
just before we got the bike. So I think I think we have put maybe 4,000 kilometers on this bike. I don't really remember off the top of my head, but we haven't put many miles on this bike since it's been here. Um, so they were likely done just before we got it. It's quite possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'll zoom in here onto the rear head. Zoop, there you go. I should focus in real nice. What I'm gonna do, I'll go to the other side of the bike to check it. So the spec on the intake valves, which are these ones, is five to seven thou. And the exhaust valve back here, I don't think you can see it on camera. Maybe you can just see the edge of it, but that's uh, seven to nine thou. So I've got a five and a seven thou feeler blade out. We'll check it. We're just gonna slide it between the adjuster and the top of the valve stem. So five fits in there. Relatively loose, somewhat loose which means it's bigger than 5,000, and 7 does not slide in. So it's right in there. It's right at 6,000. It's right dead center of where it should be. We'll check this other one. 5 is a little on the loose side. You want to see uh, or feel a slight drag. And 7 does not go all the way, doesn't go through. So it, that's right at 6,000. It is right on the money. Exhaust valve is 7 to 9. We're going to put our 7 in there. No real drag. Put our nine in there. And the nine doesn't go through. I have to really push it. It is exactly where it needs to be. Precisely. Now, I had no history on it. So, like, I have no service records on this bike. Other than what we've done here. Since we've owned it. and uh, But it was well worth the effort to check it. You got to make sure that the maintenance is done. So that's, that's fine. That's all good to get that far. Wasn't really a lot more than the carburetors. And I, I know I had to take the carburetors apart because there's something going on in there. So it was just a little bit further, a couple extra steps to check the valve clearance. You might as well do it while you're there. So I'm going to button those top covers back on. I'm going to clear the bench a little bit because there's tools everywhere. And I'm going to jump into those carburetors. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that hat off the top. And I'm going to check to see if there's a split in that diaphragm. I think there might be. I don't know. We'll see what we find when we get in there. So let me get the top of this put back together. And then we'll jump into the carbs. Okay, let's get into the top end of these things. So this is... That's the one that sounds right. This one does not. Not sure what's going on. We're going to pull that top off and have a look. It's quite possible the diaphragm's got a tear in it. I don't know. But we'll find out. Well, that's tedious. <laughs> we have power tools for a reason. Getting to the last screw if you're doing this. Keep your thumb on the cover. They're spring loaded. There's that spring. Ooh, it's a long spring. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what we got going on in here. Looks kind of funky. Well, what do you know? That ain't right. That ain't right at all. <laughs> Rubbers. Let's see if we can get a nice close-up of that. There should be enough light to get it. Can you see how it's stretching? And it's got cracks in it. That ain't right. Slide doesn't have too much wear on it. Little, you see little wear spots on them. Little shiny spots. That's not terrible, but that diaphragm, that's no good. Could have been a contamination in the fuel. I don't know. But we're going to pull this side off as well. This, I guarantee you, is why it wasn't running right. Guaranteed. Because if this diaphragm isn't working, then there's nothing to 
pull the slide up to let fuel up. So it was not working. This carb wasn't even working. It was running on one on one carburetor. Let's pull the other cover off. We're gonna have a look if there's a, wow. Well, I mean, let's face it. I'm probably putting two diaphragms in it anyways. So if it shows even slight bit of weird wrinkly stuff like that, it's getting a new one. Slide looks good. Diaphragm looks perfect, actually. Doesn't even have any of that cracky old rubber looking stuff. So I don't know what's up with that. This diaphragm is perfect. Absolutely perfect. I'll price them out. If they're not crazy money, I'll put two in. If they're ridiculous, then uh, it gets one. Because this diaphragm is in absolute perfect condition. Yeah, well, that uh, narrowed that down for sure. Just looking in, in here, there's nothing, nothing clumpy, nothing dirty in there. So, diaphragm it is. You know, every manual will tell you to check that. But honestly, I have very rarely ever seen a diaphragm go bad like that. It's very rare. So, we're going to get the spring and everything lined up. Here's a trick. If you're doing these, they can be <laughs> fun to get lined up in there. So I'm going to shove my finger up onto the slide. So I've, I've turned the diaphragm down like an umbrella like this. I'll put my finger on the bottom of the slide to hold it in that position so it can't go down. And try. We've got our spring there. Perfect. And that'll keep the diaphragm in the ring so it doesn't want to flop around on you and get you all messed up. Yep, working good, so let's get these screws back in. I'm not going to change this one. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> I got to price it out. If it's 20 bucks, it's getting a new one. I don't remember actually ever buying one, so I don't even know what to estimate the price would be. We can get that cover snug down. One, two, three, four. That's normal. That is not. Not normal. Strange. I don't know. I don't know why. And it's all the way around. Okay. So, well, at this point, it's a... Uh, wait for parts. Find them. Order them. Get them. Install them. And then we'll turn, them, turn the camera back on when I get the parts in, and we'll carry on with the repair. $110. It's getting one. Not both. Okay, so it's been a few days. I ordered my parts and I got them in today. Now we have to transfer the needle over to there. This is the new one. Worked out, it, this one was $109. My local John Deere dealer is also a Honda equipment dealer, so I can order Honda motorcycle parts for them for the quads, bikes, anything. Well, that's handy. We need to transfer that over. So inside here, it's just a little, little retainer. Use a Phillips screwdriver. Let's give it a little twist counterclockwise. Comes out. I don't want to take the needle out yet. There we go. So there's our retainer, a little spring on it. That pushes pressure down on the needle. So there's our needle. I like to just usually do a quick check, see if they're bent. Look down the side of it. This one looks good. 
always have to check underneath the head of this needle. So this area here is what it sits in the carbon bottoms out on it, but, or sorry, sits on the slide. But I noticed inside this slide, vacuum piston, there's a little shim. So you got to make sure that your shims are back where they are supposed to be. Some needles have grooves here that you can adjust your height for different altitudes, different jetting. We don't have that, so we'll just transfer it to the new one with the shim that was in the other one. Drop our retainer back in there, which they never, there you go, they never fall right. They always fall upside down. <laughs> Locked in, good and solid, we're golden. So on the top of the diaphragm here, there's a little, little area here. I don't know if you can see the contrast. There it is. You can see the little spot there. There's a little port in the carburetor that it has to sit over. And that corresponds with this little groove in the top cover. A little groove there. That's got to go all on the same spot. So give that a little wipe out of there. Make sure there's no junk in it. Okay, that's good. Our surfaces are clean. So same trick as the other one. I'm gonna put the diaphragm in that type of orientation. Put my finger in the carb body from the whatever way I can reach. And that's just gonna support the slide so it doesn't fall down when I press this in. Actually, with this nice new rubber, it's pretty solid. Fitting a new rubber might be a little more difficult than just popping the old one in. Come on. Make sure your needle lines up in the carb body. Dropping sockets on the floor. Just trying to line everything up so it sits in there nice. There we go. That sits in there pretty good. <clears throat> Just hold the slide up, get our spring in there, get our top cover ready. Ooh. It moved, but it stayed where it needed to be. Compress everything. And with the cover, just press down with your finger. You should be able to see if that slide operates properly. Listen. That's behaving the way it should. I'm going to whip these screws in there real quick. And then, it'll be time to throw this carb back on the, or the carb set back on the bike. Once it's on there, we can do our, uh, whatever, hook up whatever we need to hook up. And I have a carb sinking, synchronizing kit. So we'll be synchronizing these carburetors. I don't know if they've ever been done. But they're going to get done. Because it's important. Make sure both carburetors are functioning at the same level. That only has to be done if you've got multiple carburetors. If it's like a Harley has two cylinders and one carburetor, you don't need to synchronize anything because there's only one carburetor. So we're just going to tighten these down in an alternating pattern just to make sure everything goes down level. Just snug them down. They don't have to be stupid tight. Good and snug. And there we go. Yep, that ain't no good. So let me uh, fight and argue with these carburetors. I'll get them mounted back on the bike and uh, we'll flip the camera around and have a look what's going on over there. Okay, this might be hard to hear my voice. I'm gonna try and cover up the mic so that you don't hear so much of the bike. It's got Vans and Heinz pipes on it, so they're quite loud. So I'll go into the details after I shut the bike off, but we're going to walk over and see what the gauges are doing right now. So have a listen to that idle. It's a little choppy. Once in a while you hear a pop in one of the pipes. So it's idling like it's smooth, but it's a little choppy. This is what we're reading for our, our synchronization. Hopefully there's no glare. This carburetor is pulling more vacuum than this one. So, 
it, it's basically idling on one carburetor. So what we're going to do is, through this hole in the backbone, we're going to reach in there and adjust. Let me get my light on it. That Phillips screw. Can you see it? There's a little Phillips screw in there. We're going to adjust it. Turning it one way or the other will change the position of the butterflies in the carburetors. So let's get it down in there. I'll try and do this one-handed. Oh, jeez. Where'd that go? <laughs> Got it. We got the screwdriver down in there. And we're going to turn it one way and watch the valves. The idle changed. This carburetor is going to start to pull less vacuum. Bring that idle back down a little bit. This is the regular idle down here. Let's see where we're at now. Pretty, pretty close. Hard to see with the glare. 18. 18 ish. Let's see how nice and smooth that idle is now. No choppiness. I'm just gonna crack the bottle just a little. Give the gauges time to respond. Close there. Just the small adjustments. with that. Quite happy with that. That idle is a lot nicer now. What a difference in the idle. Hopefully you could hear my voice over the pipes on this thing, but <laughs> they're pretty loud. I've got a temporary temporary gas tank. <laughs> old snowblower gas tank just a temporary tank to feed the fuel pump that's in here the fuel pump filled the carburetors i did fire it up earlier before you know off camera because it's got to warm up to do this so man does it ever out of nice 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 they're nice and even now they're equal now this is a four gauge set you can do one you can i mean you can use it as a single vacuum gauge you can synchronize two carburetors, three carburetors, or four carburetors. Some bikes have four cylinders, four carbs. So that's, you need the four. <laughs> <coughs> so anyways, on this Honda, we can see this is part of the kit, this little brass tube. This is your vacuum port for checking that. There's an O-ring on the back of this. And what goes in there is a screw which is here on the bench somewhere. This is the screw with a washer. So that plugs up that little hole when you're done setting your carburetors. And just tread her in there. These can be actually quite tight. Uh, this one I believe has been checked before because this was not overly tight. It came out real easy for me. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm gonna tighten it up with the Phillips in a bit. This side had the screw in it. This side has the Kuryakin hypercharger, and there was a vacuum line that ran from this hypercharger diaphragm to the point over there where I hooked up my vacuum gauge. So there's already a fitting in the cylinder head. So that's all I, I just 
plugged it in where the air cleaner plugs into. And while I had this off, I tested it, and there happens to be a vacuum leak in here. So it actually doesn't hold vacuum, which means it's a vacuum leak. So I'm not going to hook this back up. I'm just going to leave it in its natural state. It just stays open. So I'm going to leave it just like that, and I'll just put a, a plug over that. My vacuum gauge line off of there. Yeah, it runs pretty good, actually. It's nice enough outside. I can take it for a test drive today, maybe. But yeah, I jumped ahead off camera and I had to put everything back on it. Everything I could. All the trims and the chromes and all that stuff. All that stuff's back on there. Airbox. I can't, I couldn't put this rear cover on. It's just a fake cover. I couldn't put those fins on there because that's where the port was for the vacuum gauge. So, pull this plug wire off. I can put my fins on, put the chrome cover on, unhook my temporary gas tank, and throw the regular gas tank on there. And this is uh, just about done. I've done all the other maintenance on it, checked the tires, and did all that stuff, oil change. So yeah, I'll get it back together and fire the camera back up. Well, there we go, guys. She's all back together. She's running on her own gas tank now. It is unreserved. There's not much in it, but uh, anyways, fresh gas. 2003 Honda Shadow Spirit 750. A little bit of check over because it's been sitting for a couple of years. We set the valves while well, we checked the valve lash. They were good. Repaired the vacuum piston in the one carburetor. Synchronized the carburetors. Oil change, tire pressures. Check the lights, blah, blah, blah. It's all good. Now it's time to take it out. Oh, I didn't say, but brake fluid is nice and fresh and clean now. I flushed it out while it was on the rack. Time to take it out for a beating, I mean a road test, and <laughs> see what shakes out. Thanks for joining me on this video, guys. Please don't forget to uh, click the like button, comment, and subscribe. And until the next one, take care.